from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Thai Cats Today with Louis Butko. Yes, it is Thai Cats Today for a Wednesday, November the 9th, 2022. Thanks for checking us out on the Thai Cats Audio Network. Louis Butko here with you as we continue to write the final pages in the book that we call the 2022 Hamilton Tiger Cats season. And I guess I haven't really thought of it. Like that, I know I've mentioned closing the book a lot this week, uh, but I guess every episode of this show was kind of like uh, one of the pages, and uh, we're we're near the end, folks. We are on the last few pages. How is it going to end? Well, we already know that uh, it ended with the Thai Cats losing on uh, Sunday in the East semifinal against the Montreal Alouettes. But uh, the book that we call this show, uh, I'm not sure how it's going to end. Uh, you'll have to tune in and find out here on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Speaking of which, uh, some other great shows available for you uh, wherever you get your favorite podcasts, wherever you found this show, uh, whether you searched it out or happened to click on, uh, by accident on Twitter. Maybe that happened. I, I don't know. And, and if you are here, then thank you. And we appreciate you stopping by. And if you're somebody who has been listening since day one, uh, we appreciate that, too. But speaking of the audio network, you can catch a brand new episode of the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. That's available there. Uh, you can also catch another episode of the CFL This Week uh, with Bob O'Neill. That's also on the uh, Tie Cats Audio Network. Coming up on this show, we'll wrap up our interviews from the Locker Cleanout Day earlier this week. We'll hear from Simone Lawrence, the longest-serving active Hamilton Tiger Cat. Talk about his season, his off-season as well. And we'll hear from Ted Laurent as well, because, you know, Ted really came on strong at the, the later half of the season after Dylan Wynn went down, as you would expect a guy like Ted Laurent to do. And uh, him and Micah had a, a strong relationship this season. So uh, we'll talk to him about that. Uh, and that's coming up. And we'll also hear from Coach Sal. Yeah, uh, I've been trying to get Coach Sal on all week. We've been running into some technical issues. Uh, so we, we did it the old fashioned way. Uh, and he'll be on the phone with us, and uh, we'll do that coming up later on in the show. Right now, let's hear from uh, Simone Lawrence. As mentioned, the longest-serving active Hamilton Tiger Cat. Uh, obviously a frustrating season for him with injuries, but uh, had to get his reflections on the season that was. Uh, the process is always the same for this. Um, it sucks. We didn't get anything accomplished that we wanted to get accomplished. You know, I feel like we all grew as people in this kind of environment and season and see how bad that we really enjoyed playing football, you know, because anytime you start off a season three and nine, you can fold and, you know, start blaming people and start doing this and that. But all we did was we didn't fold. All we did was work and gave our chance the opportunity to compete for the great cup, you know. There was teams in the CFL that started off hot, ended up folding and crashing and blaming each other. And, you know, that's just a testament to this organization about how we go about our business. You know, we're just going to put our head down and work no matter what kind of adversity is going on. Yeah, for sure. Um, this was probably one of my hardest football uh, years ever, just playing football, um, just uh, with the two injuries back to back and trying to rehab and get to a percentage good enough to even compete out there on the football field. Um, it was just a lot of like resilience and like just leaning on like my people that's in my circle to help um, get through this type of season. And um, I had great coaches and great teammates. And, you know, it's just not something that like I'm used to as a player um, ever in my life. You know, I've always been the best of the best. and. I feel like this season with the injury, I didn't perform at that level. And, you know, that's frustrating, but I understand how the game goes. So I sat up all night and conversated with a very intelligent person about what we need to do and what we need to change so that I'm able to compete at a super high level and play at a high level consistently. And, you know, we're just going back to the drawing board. Uh, I would say for sure, you know, um, just being around Coach O, you know, I remember my first time ever getting hurt. He was like, yeah, this is going to be a dot on your timeline. You'll never f remember this. And it was true because I never do remember it, like my first time coming here. And like, you know, at the moment, you think it's the worst time in the world. You're on crutches and you got to crutch to work every day and watch your brothers go to war every week, you know, because at the end of the day, we're all just trying to like, provide for our families doing something that we love to do and then we're all held, hold each other accountable for that 
and um, players, we all depend on each other. We all know that we all need each other so we can get what we want, you know? And like, it kills me every year. Like, especially like, I don't even know this feeling, you know, we were coming off of back-to-back -back cups to not get another paycheck another week. I feel like I'm letting like everybody, everybody down on my, as far as my teammates and stuff, because, you know, we're playing for each other. We're playing for the coaches and we know like the more you go, the more you're able to provide for your family and do things for your family. So this is definitely tough, you know, especially being a leader. Man, honestly, like I say like this was a hard year for me, but like the fans show like how solid Hamilton really is and about like there's no folding. And, you know, it's just like one of those gritty CZs that I say it all the time. You know, I come from that. I understand it. I understand this environment. That's why I mesh so well with it that like, you know, it's about production. It's about proving like we are who we are. But like, you know, we always got to start from the bottom. And that's just how it is. You know, like a lot of people from Hamilton can relate to that. Um, we have fans all over. But, like, I feel like our fans is the best fans in the world, you know. When you really, like, look at it, like, see a 3-9 and nine football and come cheer us on every single day, like, we're 10-0. and 0. Like, we got the best fans, and it's not even close. And, like, for us, them to always have our back through all, all the adversity, they could easily fold and be like, oh, I'm going to go do, you know, do something different. But we're packing seats. They come to all of our events. When we're in, when I go to the supermarket, it's mad pictures. Um... Like the environment, the city loves Hamilton Tiger Cats, and they're gonna support us no matter what. And like playing here, that's a great feeling, and that's something that makes people want to come back all the time. I think in the the uninterrupted doc, uh, Dylan says it's not a cute city. Uh, did you watch the doc uh, on Friday, and uh, just your overall assessment on uh, on being featured on the TSN documentary? I think they did a great job on the TSN documentary. There's things that I would have wanted to be in there that wasn't in there, of course. <laughs> but that's anything with a documentary. You got to fit the other guys reading books and walking there uh, doing things, stuff. So that's just part of it. But at the end of the day, I think they did a great job. And Dylan's right. It's not. It, he says it's not pretty season. It is pretty. To me, it's pretty because I like all that. I like it, you know. I love the good with the bad. That's how you appreciate life and everything. So I think it's the prettiest city ever just because it's like one of those diamonds in the rough. It's like... Yeah, I tell people all the time, like, sometimes I go down in Toronto, like, where are you from? And I just, like, I'm from Hamilton. It's like, oh, my gosh, da, da, da. they go crazy. Like, can't believe, but, like, Hamilton's one of those places that need to keep being put on the map. And, you know, as, as long as I've been here for a long time, and that's all we try to do. Um, this off season, um, I told, like, it's just about training. I, mean, I got some doctors I'm going to be working with. It's about training. I got a cool little venture, uh, me and Andy, Fan twos. We're doing this thing for the kids where it's going to be. It's called Sim Takes Twos, and November 25th, we're going to have a bunch of kids from all the different high schools compete against each other. Have one on ones. We're going to have a live DJ. Um, it's going to be a crazy environment. So you know, we're just going to keep giving back to the community and do what we can while I'm here, and just you know, always try to do the right thing. You know, so my blessings can continue. That, of course, was Simone Lawrence as we caught up with him on Locker Cleanout Day this week. And uh, Sim, also a uh, podcast host here on the Ticats Audio Network. Pay me to stop. Uh, available, again, wherever you found this show, on the Ticats Audio Network. All right, let's hear from Ted Laurent, who uh, really came on strong at the, the latter half of the season to step up in place of Dylan Wynn and... Uh, Obviously a big, big part of this team for many years and uh, has been through some tough times and good times with this organization. So we got him to reflect on the 2022 season. Uh, you know, like uh, I became like more vocal this year. Uh, and uh, you know, I appreciate Coach O for, you know, be, be, beating me, like forcing me to, to be vocal. And uh, I felt like that, you know, that was uh, something I learned this year that I could do. And guys will follow, so that was part of the part of my game that uh, that I learned new. Uh, we never uh, we never gave up. You know, we uh, we always talk about like uh, one thing that's guaranteed in life's adversity, and uh, we had our ups and downs. You know, we was three and nine. Uh, you know, through twelve games, and everybody had wrote, wrote us out like we was done. But we kept we kept battling. Uh, put our head down, kept going forward, kept going to work, and uh, you know we, we made strides. You know it was a little bit too late, but uh, I'm proud of the guys, man. I'm proud of this this uh, this group. You know 
like we always say, at the end of the year, uh, it's not going to be the same. But uh, we, we made uh, some, uh, some, I mean, some new friends, some great friends for life. So uh, you know, it's it's disappointed. It's not how we, uh, the outcome that we wanted, but uh, I'm definitely proud of all the guys, uh, my my brothers. Uh, it was uh, it was great, man. It was great. I had fun uh, playing with Micah. He, he taught me a few things. Uh, I taught, I taught, taught him a few things about the defense, but it, overall, it was a great experience, man. Like uh, playing next to him, communicating, and uh, you know, sh uh, playing to like uh, our, our strengths. So you always tell me like, you know, what, what you're good at. You know, so let, let me know, and I tell the same thing. Like whatever you're good at, let me know, and, and uh, you, you can uh, work on work on it on the field. And uh, it was it was really great, man. It was, it was really great playing with Micah. Yeah. We had that next man up mentality. Whenever uh, a guy's down, we expect the next guy to just uh, do as well as, as the guy that was in front of him. Um, I feel like uh, Malik played really well. Uh, Cedric brought him a trade, and he made a, was a big factor for us. Even myself, you know, uh, I was part of the rotation, a uh, rotation, and then uh, to uh, unfortunately injury to a win, I had to step up, and uh, we all did. So, you know, you always got to be prepared because you never know when your name going to be called. And I felt like those guys did. They always practice like pro, prepare like pros. And uh, when their name uh, got called up, they performed. I mean, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was playoff. And it was like, you know, we, uh, we said in the locker room, like, give it, like no matter what the, the outcome was going to be, just give it, make it your best half. Make it your, your best half. And uh, I felt like we did that all three phases of the game. But on defense, we, uh, like, we talk, we communicate. And we said, listen, this, this, that, that wasn't us. It wasn't us how we played the first half. And the second half, you know, it was a little bit too late. Uh, it was uh, Damage was done, but, uh, you know, we, we fought. One thing about us is we're always going to fight, man. No matter what the score is going to be, we, we're always going to fight no matter, no matter what. And for more on the 2022 Hamilton Tiger Cat season, very pleased to be joined by Coach Sal, John Salavantis. And, uh, Coach, how are we going to be remembering the 2022 Hamilton Tiger Cats? Wow, that that question is uh, is uh, long and detailed. You know, uh, actually, uh, when we got out of Montreal with that loss, you know, it's the worst day for a pro uh, coming to that locker room and seeing that dreaded black garbage bag hanging in the locker. So, you know, it, it went out too quick, Lou. Uh, no question about that. But at the same time, to remember the team, you know, you have to go back to where they started. They, they started off poorly uh, and they ended up poorly. Uh, so you almost have to draw the conclusion they were not good enough this year and uh, they're going to have to be a lot of changes. Well, and I think sometimes that gives a, a disservice to you know the team on the other side and, and give credit to Montreal. They played better in all three aspects of the game and, and the better team won the football game. No question about that. Uh, the uh, the loss uh, has to be equally shared by both the players and the coaches, uh, in my estimation. You know, you and I talked, uh, and we talked about what it would take to win. And the first thing we said was no turnovers. Well, Montreal forced three of them. And then we said to avoid penalties. We didn't do that. And then we said win the line of scrimmage. And for goodness sakes, Montreal just owned the line of scrimmage, both sides of the ball. It was only in the third quarter that Hamilton's defense was able to shut down the run. I think they, they had no, very few yards in that uh, third quarter, but uh, that's not good enough. You've got to play all four quarters. So to me, you know, uh, uh, Montreal set the tone on the first series of, of plays going in for a touchdown. And our offense had absolutely no answer for Montreal's uh, defense. How does Dane Evans re I don't want to say recover. How does he bounce back from a season like this where he battled injuries? And I, I get the sense he, he wasn't too happy about being pulled. Very few players are. How do you expect him to, to bounce back from this? Well, you know, I, I can't say uh, how Evans will, will end up. Hmm. He's a good football player. He, he's a good person. Uh, he's had a down year. He's going to have to do a lot to, uh, to get himself ready uh, if he's going to play again for the Ticats. But uh, to me, uh, it, the disappointment really was in, in the way they schemed things up. You know, with Evans, uh, uh, he was 7-10 in the game, and six of those passes went to White. Hmm. He couldn't find anybody else on the field. It, it, it was up to Schultz when he came in uh, to spread the ball around a little bit. Uh, 
consider this. Uh, White had eight receptions. The rest of the team had ten. <laughs> That's not good enough. Uh, the the offensive line seemed to it, it, that was the strength for for so much of that that finish to the season that, that those four wins and you know the consistency I didn't see that on uh, on Sunday what 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 was your assessment on what happened up front Well it goes back to what I said that it has to be equally shared by the players and the coaches uh, You take for example the uh, the hit that uh, sack on Schultz by Beverett uh, mm-hmm. late in the ball game. Uh, that was a simple slide technique up front between the center and the right guard. It didn't accomplish that. Uh, they didn't get it done. They allowed Beverett to come right down Main Street and, and uh, just rack uh, poor Schultz uh, in the mouth. So, you know, it, it, it to me, uh, the Montreal defense with uh, the way they played it, uh, Hamilton just did not expect to see that kind of a defense. That's the way it played out. They, they didn't understand what was going on up front uh, in order to protect their quarterback. There were six sacks in the ballgame. Is that Montreal team good enough to win the Grey Cup? I don't know that they're good enough to get past uh, Toronto. Mm-hmm. Toronto's had a good rest period. They bring Harris back. Uh, they're playing at a, at a decent level. Uh, they've got playmakers on both sides of the ball. Uh, Montreal is, is coming off a very high win uh, against uh, Hamilton. But they have to travel, and that Eastern final, uh, in my estimation, is going to be uh, a real dogfight. Uh, let's get back to the Ty Cats uh, twenty twenty two season as a whole. Where where did you see? Where on the football field were you impressed? Where did you see growth? What? Get, let's let's try to get a little positive here, Coach. What 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 are you going to remember positively about this year? Well, I remember the defensive front. Uh, mm-hmm. Those guys uh, came together after a period of time with Wynn and Hauser and, and uh, the rest of them in there, Laurent and Micah Johnson, uh, you know, they they seem to gel as as a front uh, defensive line. The linebackers played well all season long. Even with the loss of Simone Lawrence, they were able to play well at the linebacker position. The secondary went through a period of time where there was injuries uh, to their uh, group. And, and had to recover from it, but they were able to do that. They were able to move around back there and, and put people in different positions and still play well. So all of those things considered, I, I, I thought the defense was the most improved part uh, of the football team uh, and certainly led the way in most games. So offensively, again, I, I, let's, Tim White, Stephen Dunbar, two 1,000-yard receivers growing from year one to year two. Where do you see them, and how do you see them developing their game even further as they uh, continue their CFL careers? Well, they should, they should really blossom after this. Uh, you know, the, the idea that, that those two guys alone could, could get 1,000 yards uh, in receptions with the uh, pathetic way the offense played at times is interesting to me you know they they are good receivers and if you get the ball to them uh they have a great tendency to to hang on to it and get good yards for you so i see those guys improving where where you know in the run game we've got running backs uh and probably the only consistent runner we had all year long was erlington so uh i you know i don't want to be pessimistic but at the same time I see an awful lot of work that has to be done. So if you are Coach O, if you are the front office, what, what does that to-do list look like? And, and we don't need to go into specifics if, if you don't want to, but what, what do you think the top of their list is uh, for this offseason? Well, I think, number one, they've got to sit down and they've got to reevaluate everything they did uh, from beginning to end. They've got to say, okay, uh, this is where we were at this point in the, in the season. This is where we were uh, uh, later in the season, et cetera. So once they've evaluated all that, then they have to be honest with one another. You know, where was our failing? If the coach doesn't teach, uh, you know, it's it's a problem for the players. Uh, If the players don't respond to the teaching, that means it was not taught properly. Mm -hmm. So each coach has to look himself in the mirror and decide for himself whether he did the job uh, that he was hired to do. And then beyond that, of course, you go into uh, personnel. Uh, you're going to lose some people. There's never the same team coming back uh, the next year, but you're going to lose some good people. Uh, and you need to consider how you want to approach bringing in new people. 
what what does a a post mortem look like for for coaches after a season? What, what you know they have their meetings on Monday with players because that's that's really all you get. You, you you talked about those black those plastic bags that are hanging in the lockers on Monday. From there, what happens? Just can you take us into the coaching room a little bit to, on how those what that looks like? There there are different ways of doing it. When when I was with Al Bruno and. Uh, we were in the playoffs more times than we were not. But the one year we were not in the playoffs, uh, we were kicked out, uh, I think it was 87 or 88. don't even remember at this point. But, you know, Al came into the office and, and he said, I want you guys to take time off now until Christmas. After Christmas, we'll come back and we'll reevaluate everything. Now, secondary to that, you got coaches that want to start right now and begin the process of willowing out what they have to in order to get better for next year. So uh, which approach you take uh, and which one is more beneficial? Uh, I love the idea that we, we got a little bit of time off to uh, to think clearly before we came back to the office. Uh, well, speaking of time off, Coach, uh, I, I think you and I both uh, earned a little bit uh, from the season we've had and the ups and downs. And uh, you know, you know how much I appreciate uh, you always make the time to chat. So uh, thank you for doing so today, despite some technical challenges, uh, we managed to pull it off. So I'm glad we did. <laughs> Thanks, Lee, and it's always great talking with you. You've done a great job all season. I look forward to next year and talking with you again. My thanks to Coach Sal for joining me today and my thanks to you as well and I mean that sincerely and genuinely so thank you, thank you, thank you. I Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. From all of us here at the Tiger Cats Audio Network, I'm Louie Butko. Hoping you have a great day. Tiger today can be heard every weekday and we would like to hear from you. Email us at gameday at tiecats.ca. Have a question or an opinion? We want to hear it. That's gameday at tiecats.ca. Subscribe to the Tiecats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.